The bird garden, isn't it pretty? It's coming along. I think I'll start the garden tour from here this time. The spring garden tour. May 1st, and we are going to start in the bird garden. I figured I would start real quick here because nothing has come up. We are waiting for the ginger and turmeric to come up. It still does not have the warmth that it wants in the evening. But the stevia is coming up really good. And, oh, stevia? Nope, that's a zinnia. Got a couple little zinnia seeds I threw in there and I figured let them grow until all the ginger and turmeric comes up. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's go now into the bird garden and I'm going to start it here. Now I have done very little work in here compared to what I really want to do, but I have done a lot. So I'm still happy with what I've done. This container here, I haven't planted in it yet. And what I'm going to do is continue to throw like extra leaves and kitchen scraps. You can see eggshells through there until I know where I'm going to put it. So I can come grab either some of those containers that came straight out of the kitchen that are turning petrified, but it still works. Or I can dig some out and move it into a tote or raised bed or a grow bag or whatever. But I have an area this way where I can put it. This tree collard is massive and it's so heavy it's breaking. I've got it sitting on a chair. But all this, this is gold to me. I'm going to talk a lot about that because this makes the best compost. You don't want to throw this away. So if it falls on the ground, that's okay. It's making soil. You can always shovel it up. But you don't want to throw it away because it's fabulous for plant food. The plants just love it. It's, it's magnificent. So as you can see, let's keep walking. Not much has been done except for me starting to do some trimming. I'm trying to make areas where I can get into it so I can set up fountains. I moved my fountain that was back there because I'm going to start putting... Look, i got tomatoes that came up on their own. I've already got tomatoes. The zinnias died. Oh, i got to get the heads off. They're full of seeds. I've been throwing seeds around. But the tomatoes have come up inside. I'm going to designate this area strictly for the birds. That's what I'm going to do. There'll be all the feeders will be in there. And then most of the fountains. There'll be a few fountains here and there because, you know, they may not want to come in here. But the fountains, look at, they're all running. Isn't that cool? This is where the fountains are going to be. And I'm going to continue to crisscross that gazebo. Now this is the gazebo that Gary found in the trash. Somebody was throwing it away. We didn't put it together in the fashion in which it was supposed to be because it won't work for us. So he put the four corners up and then he attached it. It had, he still had the brackets from it that go across the top. So we attached it and then I started with this cross beam of, I think this is pepper, Brazilian pepper branches. And I'm going all the way across. I'm zip tying them, I'm wiring them, whatever it takes. I'm making forks so I can lay the branches on the forks from other branches. And the reason I'm doing this is it keeps the hawks out. Because when hawks hunt birds, the bird-eating hawks, they swoop down. That's how they catch their prey, by swooping. If they can't swoop, it makes it more difficult and it's safer for the birds. I want you to see that I do also grow things in the ground. See? Now that's a cutting from a tree collard, or a hybrid tree collard probably. And it's doing fabulous in the ground. It's gotten so big, and it wasn't that big when I planted it months and months ago, that I'm going to start doing cuttings and using that for composting. But it's doing really, really good. Well, actually, anytime you see dinosaur kale around like this, I haven't bought dinosaur kale in years. Plain dinosaur kale. I had plants back there that grew for about five years. They eventually died out. And as they were dying back, I started doing massive amounts of cuttings putting them in pots. So these are actually now over five years old from my original one. Oh, and one more thing I want to show you, even though it's not that important, another cutting from a dinosaur kale. These three totes here are now over five years old. So when some of you have said that your totes broke right away, I don't know what you did. <laughs> now, sometimes you may have gotten a faulty one. Maybe the plastic wasn't as good, but they are five years old. We moved them, I think, twice. I had them someplace else, and then I moved them over by the sliding glass door, and then they got moved here. So you don't want to pull them. You never want to grab and pull, because if you grab and pull, you could crack them. So you want to get most of the soil out and then move them where you want. So we moved them here, I think it's two years now, and they have been doing good. They're a little faded, and you could paint them at this point, 
because when the sun beats on them, it gets a little roughness to it, and paint, like I do the chairs, will hold beautiful on there. But these are five years old. So I just wanted to show that. And look, a walking onion that actually fell and did what it was supposed to do, because I think I had walking onions in here. Oh, I do have walking onions in here. So one fell and grew there. All right, let's keep going, because here I'm really doing a lot of work. I'm going through here and doing a lot of trimming, I'm deciding where I want to put my fountains. I'm going to change some of the fountains up I don't like anymore. I'm going to leave that there. That's a rock one back there. That's a glass bowl with a cup in it. That is a, I haven't done that video. That's just a bucket with a bowl set up. It works fantastic. The birds love it. This is the cement dome. One of the first cement things I did for a solar fountain. It worked fantastic. I've got roses back there. Those are cuttings. I took some cuttings from a rose bush and they're growing there and they're growing there and then i've got some cuttings from different types of collard remember we're going to talk a lot about collards because collard is going to be important to us because fertilizer is going to be really hard to come by this year which is going to make a lot of your farmers have, well their cost is going to go up it's there's going to be a lot of stuff and i think we can do our share for our family and our friends and we can keep the cost down to next to nothing because by growing all this collard and it can, it, you can use dinosaur kale, you can use anything you want, but I will tell you that collard, you, you put it in water, it starts to stink. That's what the plants love. In a few days, it kind of smells like it's cooking. The plants love that water, and they love the leftover leaves that are in there. It's just fantastic, and it makes everything just grow beautiful by just dumping the water in where your plants are growing, and it's just fantastic. And don't worry if there's powdery mildew in, on there. You can take all that, I do it all the time, throw it in a bucket, and you can compost that. At least I do. So that's what's going on in here. I don't want to spend a ton of time here because, again, I'm only doing small sections. Right now, I'm doing a lot of trimming and trying to get things set up. I need to trim this back. This has been getting a lot of insects inside here, aphids and stuff, see? The problem is the birds can't get in there. It's too tight. So a lot of times all you have to do is trim your plants and that gives room for birds and beneficial insects to get in there and get them. When it's real tight, then they can't get in there and you want to help them out. Another tree collar cutting. Look how big. Just something I stuck in a tote. And this is all going to be cleaned up later. And look at the trunk on it. It's so big, it dropped one on the ground and I'm using all those leaves. But look how short it is. And yet, look how massive these leaves are. This makes the greatest coleslaw. Oh my goodness. So, so good. I can tell you stories of people that have this and it's dropping to the ground and all kinds of things are growing around it. So that's what's going on here. I still need to move my mint. I haven't decided where I'm going to move the mint to. And then this whole section, I want to get rid of the birdcage, clear this out, set up chairs, and then get more plants off the ground. That will keep a lot of critters out too. And it's more controllable. I can control birds and different things too. And see all this is purple tree colored. It's in the ground. If you see a flower pot, there's no bottom on there. The flower pot is so I can water directly there and know that the roots are getting water. And that's why it's planted that way. And I guess a uh, walking onion got into that one. So that's what I use flower pots for. Now this one's above the ground. It has set the roots in there in the ground, but it's not set up the same. I like setting it up like that when possible. Okay, let's step through, like I said, oh, papayas. Look at this. They're starting to throw more fruit. We've already picked some, but they have broken through a tote. Keep in mind, an 18 gallon tote for a half a dozen papaya plants is not big enough. But I'm not gonna tell the trees that. We're definitely not gonna tell them. Let them keep going, they can have the cheap at the time, $5 tote. We get a ton, a ton of papaya off of that. And then here, I'm gonna redo those. These are also probably about five years old. So I bought them around the same time. And this is a smaller tote. See how short it is? And that's mint growing in there. And then this is mar Moringa. I've gotta cut it back. I noticed yesterday, it, it has gotten really tall. I don't need it that tall. I'll probably take it all the way down to there. And then I wanna clean all this up. But that's what's going on in the bird garden. Okay, let's go through into the rainbow garden. So just before we enter the rainbow garden, you know I planted the grow bags. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. 
maybe it's too shaded that zucchini is not growing in the grow bed sometimes it feels like it's damp and it's not and then this is really dry so i know it's drying and we're kind of warm today i'll have to keep an eye out this one out in the open is doing better so i will say in my opinion the leaves are a little small so we'll have to see what happens i've got other ideas which grow bags will work perfect for southern california but i don't know how well it's going to work for my zucchinis we'll talk about that when we get to the wall and why i'm going to do differently things with grow bags papayas everything is the same they're finally starting to get their good top leaves back because we went through so much cold this winter that it really did a number on the top leaves and i was worried on losing them but we didn't we still are getting fruit we picked some well, as you can see i still got a funky looking little fruit hanging up there um, with others i've got one there i'm going to have to get off today so the fruit's doing really good and i'm planning on putting more totes across here because i've got some extras because by having the totes even on the ground it's creating well it's almost like a microclimate they can send their roots underneath and there'll be earthworms and microbes and everything even just under the totes and then of course i will load it up with leaves and branches and all that and it will constantly give a compost tea to everything so all in all all this is doing really really well and i'm really excited with it and look at the pomegranates this year the pomegranates have gone wild so let's look over here all right well here i finally did do what i wanted to do i have now pulled all the potato mint out of here and now i replanted it so it's underneath i put part of it in there so i should get potato mint growing there it's in the mint family it grows these little tubers and you can eat them they taste like potatoes but you can eat them raw or cooked and then i also loaded it in the pink one down there since i really didn't plant in it last year so i finally got to that the strawberries i've got to clean up that's the bucket i did and some of them fell in there and grew in the bucket isn't that cute here i haven't gotten to that yet that's why this should be a quick walkthrough because i'm working on sections throughout the garden now keep in mind it is just me doing this you think well you got gary he helps me a little bit if I ask him for something, but he's got his own gardens. And that's what he said. You want to keep taking on more and more? I can't do it. And I said, I know, I'll figure it out. And I will. So I planted a squash here. This one's starting to get a little bit big. It's still a little bit small, but I did put a two system in here. So now I can load up leaves and things in there. And it is good sometimes to throw some soil in there as well. This will bring earthworms. That will start that i just threw some leaves in there yesterday so that will break down and there's holes on the bottom of the blue coffee container the earthworms can go up and down and that will give a constant food source for the plants that's what all that's about i'm slowly getting to the buckets on the bottom now being that we're going to be in a terrible water shortage this year i'm not going to change anything up yet i've got a lot of plans for southern california on what i'm going to have to do i'm going to continue right now with the buckets on the bottom i've got a strawberry plant there i've got garlic chives there i've got a celery there but i am going to keep a couple probably with these oval buckets i've got designated to catch some water so i don't have to keep track of all the water but i can kind of quickly grab a bucket and water some of the plants that may need but i am in the process of changing these up i've got a zucchini see how nice this one's growing this one's going to have a two system when i'm done but if you don't want to put a two system in what you can do is put a bucket or a pot in there and then oh see oh my goodness you saw it live with me look at all this you can put a bucket in there if you don't want to do a full two system look at the video so you know what a two system is and you could do what i do periodically i lift up that bucket grab some leaves it could be from the squash it could be from the pepino it can be from anything lift the bucket put it underneath the bucket put the bucket back and you end up with all those earthworms. I'm so glad I haven't looked for a few days. So that is really, really cool. Going to get the beets out of here and probably plant squash or tomatoes here. Going to get the broccoli plants out. I've been slowly getting the broccoli plants out. I put one over there. See next to the papaya? That's a broccoli plant. I'm moving them instead of chopping them up and composting them. I figured I'd move it and see which ones do good. So all this is going to be changed up little by little. I'm going to keep, I think, this celery, but it's going to seed so quick. So I may change my mind in a few days. Got a leak back there. The pepinos definitely are staying, and my peppers are coming back. Okay. 
the black cobra. They're making a comeback. This had a broccoli plant in it. It is definitely too much one tote for a full-size broccoli plant, which is the one that's over there by the papayas. And the pepino, which I want to cater to because I really love this and I want to get more cuttings off of it. And then the pepper, which is in its own pot. And I'm not sure if it's set root or not, but I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to leave that one. That one's done. So I'm going to slowly go through all these. Here, I am setting this up so I can put seeds and other plants in here. It just needs a little water, like fairly quick. And this was nothing. This is just, I'm going to set this up and put a cover on it and make sure that stays well watered. And let's see what's over here. That's basically it. I've got a, the same fountain that's there on the chair. That was a broken chair. So that was set up here. It's a, one of the cement projects I made. No, I didn't do a video on that. I should. With a bucket. And this is just something you get from the nursery when you buy plants. I've talked about this. My dad built this like over 40 years ago. He used to work for the pickle plant. And he used to bring home all these green buckets and he cut it. And he built this. And then I've got this in here now. This is a purple tree colored. See, you can grow purple tree, any of the tree colors, even in a small pot. Just feed them well and they will keep going. And try to direct the trunk up. Because if you don't, they get like this. See, I didn't direct it. So it's kind of kinking. But if I would have directed it right from the beginning, it would have been really nice and straight. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. But I just thought I'd say that. And then what else? Oh, the pizza garden's making a comeback, and I think it's doing good. The walking onions are doing good. I don't know if I'm going to leave the pepper back there, but that's okay. Basil, two different types of basils here, purple and green. You've seen that. That's my rosemary cutting in its own pot that I put in there. So far, my thyme is happy here, so that's good. And the peppers from last year that I were going to pull out, well, they're actually doing quite well. They're throwing flowers, and yeah, right now they've got flowers. So I'll keep an eye on them. If they do good, I'll leave them. And if they don't, I'll get some more peppers. I've got the tricolored sage. I'm actually thinking of moving the tomato. Has it set root? Not yet. Oh, look at the worms. That's what I always tell you. Worms go under pots. So you can go to anybody's house, lift up a pot, a rock, and you should find some earthworms. And then that's the regular sage. The reason is I've got one of these on my deck. Planted them both at the same time. I planted the other one in these black containers I'm starting to use now. I love those containers. And the thing is much bigger. So I'm thinking I might put a real tomato plant. Real. These are the patio ones, and they are really compact. I mean, they're growing a lot, but if I put a cherry tomato in there, it will just fill up. And it will look so pretty. So I'm thinking of changing that up. And then I'm getting very close to working on my bucket system. It will look like this, but the buckets will be different colors. I really like this. This is locked and it cannot go over. It is a lock system. Those stakes are going through all the buckets, so it works really good. I have a video on that. Let's see, what else is there? Let's walk over here. I'm not going to bother taking you all the way down the driveway because I haven't touched anything, so it will look exactly the same as it did the last time you saw it. So this I'm just starting to. I just got over here. That's the closest I've gotten to this wall, but I am working on it. Here I'm making myself, it's a mess, but I'm taking milk cartons and I'm making a cutting table. So these are, look at this. Oh, when I see this, it just says a branch in there and look at this, the purple tree colored. So this is doing fabulous. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of cuttings. Anything I'm not sure about are gonna go here. I'm gonna set this whole area up for cuttings. And then that's basically it here. I mean, my watermelons, I'm trying to find places for all of them. So I'm getting close to getting these all out. And then this, oh, we had lettuce yesterday. I really don't need a hood. You only need these hoods really when they're small because a bird or something can come by and chomp it down. But I mean, if you're trying to keep all insects off, yes. But the poor thing, we had salad last night. We had salad. It's been getting a little bit of white fly probably because I've been leaving it open. But you know what? They haven't done any damage. And I just wipe them off or wash them off. Just a little bit it's been getting. Had it been open, the bush tits here would have gone in there and cleaned it all off. That has been wonderful. And I love those tops. We're going to make all kinds of those tops. What else is over here? Oh, see? I love the polka dot plants. Look at this. There's three plants in there. I took them all out. And I've been starting to do the plants. And I think it's so pretty. There's two in here. 
get the whole tray for like three dollars or you can go inside and buy one plant for seven go figure it out <laughs> so that's basically it okay going back here I actually could probably get this whole thing done in two days once I get here that's why I'm not really anxious I'll leave the green sorrel that's a purple tree color that I'm gonna move underneath the upside down planter walking onions I might leave some or move some but this is what I set up here I've got the grow bag with the chili peppers and then of course look at my my beautiful peppers here the black cobras they start green they turn black and then they'll turn red when they ripen that that never left the roots have never left through the pot so it doesn't need a lot it just likes compost tea just give it some compost tea and it goes and that's the celery in the yellow bucket peppers are going to do really good here in southern california in grow bags why maybe we'll get into it more another time but the basic stuff is on peppers they actually don't mind getting dry so it stresses them and it creates them to make more flowers because they think uh oh something's happening and they make more flowers which means more peppers so i'm going to probably grow peppers in grow bags that is my eggplant we're just trying to make a comeback and see here's a five gallon bucket and this thing is stressed and i have been cutting cuttings out of this because look at this this is a beautiful straight cutting you would take that out from the bottom it's coming from the bottom trim off most of the leaves stick it in a pot and it will grow old zucchini from last year nothing done here yet i just did a potato harvest which was quite nice we actually had potatoes the other night this came up and it's been going so good i actually freshened up the pot put some leaves and stuff down there and i'm going to leave that I haven't gotten to any of this yet this i just planted some cucumbers recently we'll see how they go look a little skimpy i think i didn't get to them in time because i did buy those and we'll see if i waited too long but we'll see i haven't planted anything on the bottom but what i'm going to do is i'm going to create some lift so i'm probably going to put squash on both sides unless i go with tomatoes and i'm going to be planting in the black totes as well as the yellow bucket so that's the way i'm planning on setting it up i think that will be really really good it adds a little extra soil and that's good for the plants too and i can put multiple plants in there because some will have a bucket and some will have the tote this is my cardboard box garden oh my goodness i love it i'm protecting right now the watermelon from the wind as you can see things are blowing see how it's blowing even now constant wind i've talked about that on a live feed never when i moved here in 88 did we have wind the air was still the city down below because we sit up a little bit above the city is now all shopping centers and malls and we've analyzed it and figured out all that cement has created heat to come up and create wind and now we get wind this breeze all the time and it's kind of to me sad because when i bought the place in 1988 there was no wind i could leave umbrellas out all day it was beautiful and then as the years went on they started building all these shopping centers taking away all the trees and the native land and plants and stuff and turning it into all that created extra heat that blows uphill. So right now I don't want the cold air because at night it, with the breeze, it blows on the watermelon and it's still too early for watermelon, but look how nice. Isn't that cool? So I've got a two system compost system in there so it can feed the watermelon. Look at this. This was a tiny plant like five days ago. This, I think it's a Russian red kale. It's some sort of kale and look at that it's just i planted it, it was real tiny and it took off got oh i didn't even know there was a cucumber on that one. Oh, look at that okay so i'm getting cucumbers on that and then oh this tomato plant i experimented i think i'll get into that another time because it's not here i experimented planting the two different 100s bought at the same time the same size this one is like triple 10 times the size of the other one and the other one still isn't growing and this one is loaded so and just taking off like mad i love it so th i think the cardboard box or a tote or a bucket is the best way to go i tried planting it in the container of potting soil oh look at that i've got to get that off today i think i'll make myself a cucumber tree so i've got the cucumbers this is the eggplant already starting to throw flowers in the cardboard box there's peas down there i don't know but that might be a tomato that fell in there see all the seeds this is just a flower and some walking onions 
This is radishes I talked about on the last one, doing really, really good. There's a pea coming up over there. And this is the sun golds. And look at that, I've got tomatoes all over it. Is that cool? This is doing really good. The peppers, look at this. The peppers, I mean, this is just an old leaf. You leave leaves. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. So I've got two pepper plants in here and I figured, you know what? This box can handle two pepper plants. Then I've got tomatoes and there must have been a squash seed in the soil from last year. I did not plant that, not that I remember. And it just came up like two days ago. So I'm leaving it for now, but the tomatoes in there. And then of course this is, these two are zucchini. So these are all squash here. These I know are zucchini. Look at this. Is that cool? Okay, this one was in the little box. It had two plants. I took it out. So it's improving. It was a small box, but two plants were way too many. And this one, these are hybrids that came up. Now that one didn't get pollinated. I've been really trying to help because we haven't had a lot of bees around. Not in my garden. So I've got another one there I'm going to have to watch because that's a female fruit on there. That's a female flower. So when it opens, I'll hand pollinate it. But look, I hand pollinated that. See how kind of odd it looks? It's a zucchini hybrid. So they're coming out kind of long and round. I'll show you another one. Swiss chard growing on the ground next to it. And I have not did my tool yet. I had this all attacked by a squirrel. And then I had it, I can, came frantically running out here with tool and I draped it all the way across because they ripped up the leaves and they haven't come back. They don't like the tool. See, they might have even blown it out there by grabbing it and it kind of got stuck to their nails and they ran. They do not like the tool. So I strung it along the chairs as well. I don't have to even cover the plants with it. I just have to make it to where I know where they're coming from. And then if they're coming up, let's say the front of the chair or jumping or whatever they're doing, just put the tool there because they don't want any part of it. Look at this, the zucchini hybrid. This one's round. I'm gonna tell you, see how windy it is? I'm gonna tell you that these have been fabulous. I've been picking them and eating them. Last year's plant, every time I go to pull it out, it keeps throwing fruit and it's all coiled up, but it is last year's plant. Let's see, is this a male or female? It's a male flower. I've got two of them in here, but it, you, if you saw it on last garden tour or my video, they were small plants and they were struggling. There was a whole bunch of them in there. Well, these two are taking off and I've got to do a good trimming on them. Trimming them a certain way will promote more growth. So I've got to do that. I just haven't had time. Put that one in there. That one's just starting. These are looking really good. That's what you really want to see. Those cucumbers, I moved them out of the grow bag. They were just a mess. All the leaves died on them. I don't know if they'll come back or not. Well, they're not hurting anything. They're going to stay there. I moved them here. But see, that's what you want to see on a nice young plant. Look at the size of the leaf. Think of what's in here. I make all my own soil. I put such a small amount. Most of these have nothing in here as far as store pot. A couple of them might have because I, maybe I just got lazy and instead of looking over at another tote and pulling from another tote and putting it on top, I might have put in a little bit of soil. I mean, really, a little bit. But this is really, really cool. This one probably did have because you can see the white, but it could have been from last year's too. This is gorgeous. Had that covered too. More, let's see, these are zucchini hybrids. Nope. That's a zucchini hybrid and these are labeled, so I will know what's what. No labels, so that's a zucchini hybrid, but this one I know is a zucchini. And boy, have I been picking zucchini off of this picked it and we had it last night for dinner and it was big but there wasn't any seeds inside it was beautiful to fry up on a frying pan with butter it tasted so good with a little salt and pepper let's see this one also is there a label in there if there's no label then it's no it's it is a zucchini hybrid how do i know because i see the tendrils down there and zucchini should not have tendrils this is all from last year i have not gotten to it so we'll see what happens but it's got Swiss chard, it's got a tomato coming up. I think I'll, I put this in here and I think I'll cater to the tomato and let the tomato do its thing. Thin out some of the Swiss chard and then I've got the garlic chives in the back of the pot. I don't know if this is gonna make the move. I think I showed you recently that I put the watermelon in another area and it was too cool and it kind of got stunted. So I moved it here, but it might be too late. And then I've got two more hybrid zucchini. See how I just hang the top? They don't want to go near it. Squirrels, they don't want to go near the tool. The meadow. The weeds are dying back. But that's okay. Let's see. Let's keep going through here. 
We had an issue. The issue we had is I found out that a neighbor has been releasing animals up here. Thought it would be a nice home. You can't do that. And I'll tell you a, a bit as we look at this. The ponds, we couldn't figure out what was happening to them. They used to have all the beautiful green growth on the top and all the dragonflies were climbing out. Everything was just going beautiful. And all of a sudden we started coming out here and I haven't seen that many dragonflies. The green growth was all gone. I was trying to figure out, did the deer do it? What did it? And then I caught him. I, caught, I did call him and have it out with my neighbor. He's not a next door neighbor. He lives a little bit down the street. And I said to him, see, so everything is basically the same. Let's walk over to the truck bed and I'll keep talking. I said to him, how dare you be releasing all these animals up here? And he's, it, the worst part of us, he's bringing it from a city that's 30 miles away. It's, they're not even from here. So it has nothing to do with how or what it can do. It doesn't know what to do. I see a bee swarm. Oh no, I don't know if you can see it on camera. Gary's bees are swarming. Gonna have to let him know. And not that he can do anything, but they're leaving. If you can see they're coming out of the hive and they're going up. Hopefully everything's okay. I found out that he started dumping because he didn't want them at his girlfriend's property, the raccoons and possums and who knows what else, all the animals up here. I told him it is illegal. You cannot be moving animals. And if he doesn't stop right now, I'm gonna report him. In the meantime, they have torn up Gary's garden. They have torn up his plants. They have destroyed the ecosystem in the ponds here. We don't have raccoons. And the reason we haven't had raccoons here for years is there's not enough food source and water for them and then with the coyotes. So it's kind of been a pleasure not to have so many. They've turned into city animals and now these animals don't even know what to do or where to go. So they have been just wreaking havoc on anything. I mean, they went into Gary's garden. They didn't even eat anything. They just tore things apart. Same thing here. There was nothing to eat. But the only other thing they may have eaten out of the ponds is all the nymphs, those big creatures that turn into dragonflies. They may have found those, found out that tasted good, and they've been pulling them out and eating them because the dragonflies stopped. So it's been kind of upsetting on that, but hopefully he's not gonna do it, and I don't know what will happen right now, so we'll wait and see. Trek bed is coming along. I haven't quite finished it. I've gotta get it tooled. I had a squirrel or something get in here. Hope it's not the raccoons. So I did make this top, which has been really nice. I might take that off right now. And what I'm gonna do is come through here and just drape tool all the way around. I'm gonna get inside and put tool in there. And that should stop them, because if they try to jump up and they touch the tool, they'll leave. They haven't touched the tool top. See, I put a birdcage over one, because they did chew up my butternut squash, I think it is. Yep, they chewed that up. It may make a comeback. And then I've got spaghetti squash. I've got some hybrid zucchini back there. They started chewing on things, so when I put the tool on, they even attacked this, it's all good. So tool works really, really good. So try T-U-L-L-E. So if you have a problem, you know, for $10 a bolt, I'll put the link underneath. This is where I get mine on eBay. $9.99, $10, and it's less. It's like $8 if you buy a whole bunch. It's 54 inches wide by 40 yards. I mean, I could do the whole wall with one bolt and still have probably leftovers. It's amazing how much you get, how far it goes. I just love it. I get the dark green, but I also get black, I get red. It, color doesn't matter. Your plants don't care. All right, so I haven't gotten into here yet. I haven't watered for three days. So some of them look a little droopy, like my celery looks a little droopy. I just haven't watered for three days. I'm gonna water today. Tomatoes are coming along here. I stuck some plants in that were around here. The carrots are coming along good. So all in all, this is good. I, I want to plant watermelon in here. So I'm kind of waiting for the temperature to get a little warmer because a couple years ago I had watermelon growing in both of these and that was wonderful. Zucchini will grow really good. I'll probably put some zucchini in here real soon because this is going to be gutted. I, what I'm going to do is just pull it out, dig it up a little bit, not turn it, but kind of add in other leaves and things and then plant. That's what I'm going to do. I might leave that because the walking onions are doing good. Move most of this out. This is nothing to eat. But this I'm gonna leave, it came up on its own. Now these are, again, hybrids of hybrid. And what's 
really amazing on these is the tomatoes on here are bigger than they were last year. Last year they were real small, but the hybrids are bigger. So that's really cool. And there's two tomato plants. This one, let's see if you can see this, elongated. They're a different shape, which is really cool. And that one's round and they'll turn a reddish because they're kind of a hybrid off the midnight snack. And they'll turn reddish and that's when they're ready to eat. And plus you'll be able to feel them and you'll know they're, these are so hard, but oh, they're so good. And then these are scarlet runner beans. And look, they're running up my tomato plant. Isn't that cool? I need to get some more sticks in here. Sticks bring in birds and birds, hopefully they won't eat my tomatoes. I had a mockingbird eat a whole one in the tomato. But when you get the, or the Orioles are here, they love hornworms. We don't have hornworms yet, but as soon as they start hatching and they start showing up, they don't want to go because of the trichomes, that fuzz on there, that's sticky and they can't wash it off. It doesn't wash off with water, so the birds stay away. But if you put sticks all over it, branches and stuff, then the birds will come in and they'll reach, they'll sit over and reach and they'll get the worms off. And then you won't even have to be picking off or worried about any type of hornworms. They'll get like 90% of them, which is really cool. Celery, again, I'll get all this, but I'm gonna save the seeds from this because this is my lettuce. And that is basically it, the front yard. I haven't done anything with the front yard so we can skip it. All in all, I think, let me sit for a minute. Everything is doing really, really good. I'm very excited over everything and I'm done there. I can little by little, you know, over spring and summer, add in different things I want to grow. I love the cardboard boxes. I know they're going to disappear, but I should get plenty of food out of that. And then in the meantime, I'm making my own soil. And it's going to be really important, I can see, if you've got any place to garden, to garden something, because I am watching prices go up. Overnight, sugar went up. I tried to buy it the other day. My area, the certain sugar I was buying, they were out. They got it in, and it went from like 39 cents a pound to 75 cents a pound. That's a big jump. But I did find they have not raised their small packages yet. So I'm buying the small packages that are still at 39 cents a pound and I'm going to have plenty of sugar. I have to have a lot of sugar for the hummingbirds. Another thing that I'm going to stock up on will be dog food in case there is a shortage. They're talking six months, but I'm not going to wait six months. And one other thing Gary and I are thinking about is a big freezer because I like freezing and we may get another freezer. I'm not really big in the canning, but who knows? I may take up canning. You can dry things. I have dried things and made green powder. You can make green powder out of collard or kale if you're growing in abundance. And I'm going to grow, I hope, a lot of lettuce because I absolutely love having a taco salad. And we had it the other night and I said, boy, I can eat this all summer every single day. So if you've got any questions, please ask. I'm trying to get to the questions. If I don't answer you, that doesn't mean I'm not going to put it in the next video or a video coming up because it is so important for us to start growing things. And if you can't afford to get a tote, I have noticed that Walmart has them in the stores all over at $7. Last year they were under five and they did have some for under five and I, they had some for four like a week ago. And I posted it on one of my videos. And then what happened was I ran back because Gary said, oh, go grab me a couple. And they were gone already. So they're going to go really quick. But you can look online and they periodically throw certain colors on sale real, real cheap. And we found some of those. Somebody called it eggplant. Good color. It was, they called it red online at Walmart. The Sterilite 18-gallon tote. But when they came, they were kind of a purpley, browny red. And eggplant was the perfect name for them. And we love them. We bought three cases of them. I think it was $50 for eight. My daughter bought two cases. And then other people have told me they bought them. They just ran out of the green. They've had that beautiful green color on walmart.com. I have nothing to do with walmart.com. It's just that they've got the best price I can find so far. The best price is going to a thrift store. And if they've got them, they'll sell them to you for a dollar or two or go to yard sales or rummage sales. You can find totes. Don't throw the lids away because I'm using the lids, as you can see, for all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. Stuff I haven't even talked about yet. So you want the lids, but if you don't have the lids, it's okay, because right now the totes are important. If you can't afford to buy any containers, raised beds can cost you hundreds of dollars. Go ahead and get a cardboard box set up and just be aware that it's gonna break down. And that's okay, because when it breaks down and just turns into a pile of dirt, let's say, it's not, it's gold. 
you've created your own compost, your own soil. So it's a win-win all the way around. I wouldn't put box in box, just use one box, because if you make too many creases in a box, you'll end up places for snails, slugs, and roly-polies to hide. And if they can't find enough food, then what they'll do is they'll hide in there, come out at night, and they'll eat your plants. So just a single layer box is perfect. Can't think of anything else I'm trying to, I'm trying to answer questions before they come in. So I am going back to work because my goal is, I've done all this, all this I've done. I'm pretty much done with the trio there, the, the three black totes and the red totes and now the buckets, except I'm just thinking what I'm gonna put in there. I am growing seeds. Gary set up that greenhouse room in the house and I'm, we've got seeds growing in there now. Plus, I wouldn't mind to go back to the nursery and look around and see what they've got. And then look around at things that are coming up as volunteers on their own because those plants, when they come up in your yard, because they grew there the year before, they're the most vigorous plants. Oh, and guess what? There is that squirrel. Remember that squirrel on the video? He's still here and he doesn't mind anything. But I will have to say that we did find out that when that person was dropping off all the raccoons, the raccoons were dropped off in the corner here. They came right up that night, we didn't know, but we know now, up the pepper tree, and they slaughtered and killed the cooper hawks. Because they, they kill, it looks like they killed the female, and then they ate all whatever eggs and babies in there. So we have no cooper hawks this year. They nest every single year, and that's what the raccoons did. So hopefully they find someplace else to go. But Gary said he had them, he thinks, uh, last night in one of his ponds. We have been putting solar lights out across. That's what's hanging on the wall. I got them at Walmart for solar lights for $24, I think it is. And let me tell you something, they've been fabulous. So I'm hoping when they go on at night, they're scaring some things off. I've seen the deer go through. I check my cameras at night. I've seen the deer up against the house and the skunks. But the skunks and the deer don't do that much. The deer has nibbled a little bit here and there. But raccoons, not only do they eat, they play. And when they play, they, the stuff I've heard from people, they can just, they'll just tear things apart just because of the sport kind of fun. So I don't know, but hopefully he never dumps a bunch of raccoons. And he says to me, it was just raccoons and possums. And I said to him, well, you didn't want him, did you? And then he had nothing else to say. It is against the law and he can get arrested for that or get super big fines. So with that, I am getting back to work. I am anxious to get back to work. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow, anything, even parsley or lettuce. Bye-bye.